Oh, buddy, Andy here again. Well, I thought this evening I'd, I'd do an experiment. I just I've finished doing another washing up and all those sort of chores, and the cup says, and I think I might make, I might record a blog today, you know. And I couldn't really think of a title. I've got loads of ideas and things written down, but nothing struck me. And I thought I know what I'd do. Just type out a message, put it on Twitter, and just say that let's have a I'll try an experiment, get people to suggest um, titles or topics or something like that for a video. And I thought well, I'll just read it, turn on the camera, and then sort of see what comes out. I've often wondered what would happen if someone did that. Say, right, Andy, just talk about this, and then and see what goes. <laughs> I've got a crazy one from Kurt about gingers invading Japan, but I've got a couple of uh, good ones from Jen Blizzy Kitty over there in America. And one of the ones that she put was something like, a crazy thing happened to me on the way to 50. And I thought, I know, I'm going to run with that one. Because the other one was tied up with age as well. And for those who don't know, I'm, I'm now 51 years old. So lots of crazy things have happened to me on the way to 50. But that's what's good. That's, you know, we, we need to experiment in our lives. We need to have fun. We need to get out there and enjoy ourselves. And maybe be a little bit dangerous at times and have crazy times and do crazy things and crazy thoughts and that because that's what life's about. Life's about having fun, especially when you're younger as well. Obviously, as you, you get older, okay, you might be more comfortable. You supposedly have got more money and time and all this sort of stuff. And people retire early and they've got the chance to do just about whatever they want. But it's when you're younger, you, you can really do it. Because when you get older, you, although it's one of those sort of paradoxes isn't it you get older you have more time and you have more money but your body just won't let you do things anymore you'll, you'll find that out don't worry they'll come to you as well <laughs> later i'm all right at the moment but i'm conscious of the fact that you maybe you need to get these things done and i think people need to do that you see so many people now think right i'm gonna get my job sorted i'm gonna get my career sorted i'm gonna get married have my 2.4 children or whatever the, whatever the equivalent is that nuclear family maybe you don't have a nuclear family maybe they have a soulless family nowadays it's a you know nuclear we're going sort of green um and so you know we, we do that and we forget that life's there yes yes if you want to you know you've got those ambitions to be married and to have the kids and all that sort of stuff that that's great but uh Try not to let things get in the way of life. I mean, we all live life in different ways. We all have different priorities. We all have different ways of looking at things um, and different opportunities as well because sometimes you have more money than others and, you, you know, the job doesn't work out and it gives you an opportunity to go and do something that you've always wanted to. Other times you get into a job, you can't get out of it for whatever reasons. You owe money and things like that, you know. There's all these sort of variables that go on, especially in today's climate. And we all know what's going on around the world. That if you've got a job, you want to try and keep hold of it for as long as you possibly can. Because um, the alternative isn't very good, is it? And, but... <sighs> If you are younger, that's a great time to get out there and do things. We have, I mean, the gap year. I don't know when the gap year sort of started. I mean, I, I presume you have it in wherever you live as well, but certainly in the UK. And it's something that's grown up over the past decade, I would say. Um, although people possibly had gap years years ago, I don't remember it being spoken about now. Nowadays, you have holiday companies that specialise in getting kids or young adults who leave school before they go to university or college or whatever the equivalent might be and actually go out there, earn some money working in bars or shops or doing whatever they do and they get their money and they generally go off around the world to do, do some big adventure and they have a gap year and then they come back and they start their life. Now I think that's great, that's exactly the sort of thing that you want to do, the crazy thing that can happen on the way to 50 is that you get out there and enjoy yourself. I was lucky enough when I was younger because I didn't have the sort of ties and, you know, I hadn't sort of got married at an early age or anything like that. Um, not sure there was any really any close calls, to be quite honest. I can think of one relationship, but that's, that's another story altogether. And I actually did a little bit of travelling with uh, a, well, a friend of mine mainly and a story I've probably related before. We were sitting in the pub one evening, me and, and this guy's name's Keith, as it happens. And... Uh, our friends, our sort of colleagues and that, sitting around the pub and we're all having a natural and they were going to do this and they were going to do that in the summer and, you know, we thought, well, you know, well, there's just two of us, they're good friends, you know, just sitting and thinking, well, what, what are we going to do now? 
Uh, where can we go? A nice and oh, I don't know. We've got to go away. You know, let's just try and do something. They're you know, both both working, I believe. So I said, why don't we go to Greece? You know, that'd be something. That's to me, that sounded exotic. Going to Greece, uh, and this is way back in the sort of uh, about 1980, 1981. And um, um, Keith turned around, my friend turned around, and said, well, why don't we go to America? You know, I think, well, whoa, you know. That's, that was a big step. We'd had sort of friends that had done that and even done that sort of gap year type of thing, I suppose. But that's what we did. We, we arranged it and we flew to Miami, got a car and we drove around the Everglades and up the Gulf Coast and went to Orlando and Tampa and all this sort of stuff. And then we flew off over uh, to New Orleans and stayed there for a week and had a great time and then come home. And then the two of us, we went to Sri Lanka next year, I believe, and we spent two or so weeks in Sri Lanka basically backpacking. And then we also went to India a couple of years later and things. And we did actually get to Greece once as well. And then uh, even when I met my wife, I was in that, it was about the time that I was going to India with, with my mate again. And I sort of opened her eyes, I suppose, to sort of a bit of travel. But we got out there and we went to various places in Europe, Portugal, Greece again, and, and places like that, and we also went to Egypt, uh, and things like that. So I felt that I'd done a little bit before, but sort of myself and my wife sort of settled down and had the children and everything. I felt that I'd lived a little, and it does, it does help you, I think. It helps you to get through what can be a pretty crazy time. And can, can be, you can think about these things. If you think to yourself, you know, you, you have your children, you've got your mortgage and that, and, it, and it's your life's set for a while because, it, as I said before, there's not a great deal of ways out of these things sometimes. You're there, you've got to live with it. This is what, you know, what, you, what your life is. I'm not complaining. You know, you, know, you go into these things knowing that I certainly did, whether it be the marriage, whether it be the mortgage, whether it be the children. It was all done knowingly. But I had that fallback that I'd done something in my life before and I felt that I, I could live on that if you see what I mean, live on the interest of what had gone before and it could carry me through till I get, got to the time when the children were older, things changed a bit, maybe the mortgage payments had gone down a little bit, all those, you're a bit more comfortable etc, a bit more settled and you can actually then start having some more holidays yourself uh, either as a family, and you can start travelling a little bit or you, like I did last year, going to America and things like that on my own so there you go crazy things have happened to me and you know i've done other things as well i said before we used to play drums in bands and that sort of stuff and there's <laughs> some good stories that can come out of that and some great uh well think, adventures i suppose nothing too drastic but just little things i can look back on on and i can say i did that you know, I, I did that. I got up on stage in front of people and played and played our own songs and had people sing along too and got people to travel by coach with us to London or to other places to come and see our gigs. And we made a couple of records and we did that. Nothing spectacular, but it's just one of those things that you can look back on and you can think, yeah, yeah, that was good. I've done, done something with my life. Even it might only be a small thing, but it's something that other people haven't done. That, that sounds a bit elitist, and, but that isn't the way it's meant, but it just means that you can think to yourself, yeah, yeah, that's good. Something you can be proud of, something you can look back on. And you need to do these crazy things while you've still got the time. We don't always get the time, as I said. The older you get, sometimes you might have more opportunity to do these things, but you haven't got the, the wherewithal. Maybe your health isn't so great or something. So if you are younger, think about it. Grab that, grab the life by the balls, grab it by the neck, and if you get the opportunity to do something, take it because you never know you might look back on it and you think oh, i wish i'd done that or you'll get you'll get into you know the normal married life and, and you look back and you'll start resenting the fact that you didn't do some of those things that you wanted to and i bet your life that that's sometimes at the roots of why some relationships don't last is because the people didn't actually live a little bit before they got together and then they had all that go that goes on. I said, well, everyone's lives are different, everyone has to live differently and we all have certain different circumstances. But uh, I think living a little bit crazy before you get to 50 is a good thing because maybe if you've done that, you're more willing to be a bit crazy after you're 50. And I've always said that I intend to grow old disgracefully and hopefully that's exactly what I'm going to do, whether it be here in 10 years, 15, 20 years, I don't care. I intend to carry on the way I am. And maybe my past experiences, apart from getting me through to where I am now, quite happy and you know, contented with the way things are going, makes me, also gives me that little edge that I think, right, well, I still want to do these things. I still hanker back to what I did then. It's given me a taste for 
adventure, I suppose, if you want to put it in that way. A, and a, a little a hint of craziness that came in there. You're doing things, especially some sort of, a lot of the travel that I've done has been not, not arranged. It's been essentially backpacking or very little arrangements. A lot of it's done myself. Uh, even to the holidays that I've been to Spain have been booked on the internet. I've done them myself. I've done what I wanted to do. So there's always that little bit of adventure even when you get to somewhere. You get to the airport and you think, right, are these tickets valid? You know, and you get to the, the other end and the car and then you get to the villa or whatever it might be, accommodation. You, mm, and you're not, you're not quite sure. You haven't got anyone there waiting on a bus with a clipboard. Yes, Mr. Mr. Moose Man and Mrs. Moose Man <laughs> or the baby Moose Man <laughs> are all, all there, you know, and you're herded onto a coach. Have that spirit of adventure. Get out there on your own and feel it for yourself. You get far more out of a holiday if you do it away from the crowds of all the other people, you know, the Brits or the Americans or whatever it is that, that you're travelling with. And that's one of the great things that I, I felt last year when I travelled to America was spending the time with Americans. To me, that was a great thing, something completely different. I'm not suggesting that you have to go to those extremes, but just get that idea in your head. Go a little bit off the beaten track as well. Do something that's slightly different. Do things on your own. Even if you're on an organised holiday, you can duck out of that you know, organised excursion and go and do one yourself. And you'll probably learn a lot more. You'll gain a bit of respect from the locals as well. And you'll gain a bit more of an insight into the country that you're in, the culture that you're in as well. And I'm sure you get a great deal of reward out of that. So there you go. <laughs> um, crazy things or whatever. That, I can't even remember what the title of the video was now. So that's the things to do. That was crazy before I got to 50. And that's where this video has ended up. So if, if you've seen the Twitters, send me some more like that. Just send them in and I'll see what I can think of. And just turn on the camera and see what comes out. Talk about life and talk about my experiences or something like that. It's quite interesting. I've quite enjoyed doing this. And hopefully <laughs> you've enjoyed the results. Anyway, thanks for your time. I shall speak to you again soon. Goodbye.